Glory to God. Glory to God. Everybody, blessings to you. Greetings to you. Now, when you walk in, in the fullness of the Spirit, remember John chapter 1 says that of his fullness we have received in grace for grace, which is so amazing. Of his fullness we have received in grace for grace. Let's look at that text here. Of his fullness, John chapter 1, we have received in grace for grace. Of his fullness. Now, saints, um, the fact that the Bible is talking about of his fullness, that shows you that um, this is nothing missing here. This is the fullness of God. That's John chapter 1. John chapter 1 says, of his fullness we have received, and grace for grace. Now, saints, when it's talking about the fullness, we're also seeing that God has invested 100% of who he is into you. So you're not depleted, nor are you lacking. You have the fullness of God. That's verse 16. John chapter 1, verse 16, and of his fullness, we have all received. We have all. So guess what? This not just talking about the prophet, nor is this just talking about the apostle, nor is this just talking about the pastor, the teacher, the evangelist. It's talking about everybody. It says, and of his fullness, we have all received and grace for grace. Now, saints, when we deal with grace for grace, we're dealing with the fact that um. One grace leads you into the next. Hallelujah. I want you to think about that. Like when grace is spent, you don't go into bankruptcy. There's another transaction of grace that comes to you. So it says grace for grace, which means that when that grace is used, then you enter into the next grace. The grace is for another grace. My goodness. Saints, if we look at this in a spiritual sense, it's real powerful because when it's saying that of his fullness, we have received in grace for grace, that means that once you finish exerting the activity of one grace, it is actually going to guide you into the next, the next grace. So imagine if you use the grace of joy to fulfill something, right? That grace for joy is to lead you into the next grace for joy. If you use wisdom, that grace of wisdom is to lead you into the next grace for wisdom. So when David behaved wisely concerning, uh, he behaved wisely concerning Saul, that grace led him to the next grace. So that's what grace for grace is. When King Jesus kept going from village to village and was preaching the gospel, demonstrating the kingdom, that was grace for grace. So one village, he would do miracles, but that grace, when he spent it all on that village, then it was for another grace. So he would go to the next village because the next grace was in that place. So you see how it was dangerous for uh, Jonah to not continue on to Nineveh because the grace that he was walking in was for Nineveh. That was the next grace. So it was a continuation. So same with you. Uh, you have a continuation of your grace. So when you shut down on God, imagine the grace that you had before was for another grace. So you see the dangers of backsliding or you see the dangers of being distracted because graces are connected to higher graces. Think about that. So Joseph is handling the grace in Potiphar's house. First, he handled the grace for slave. He was a grace for slave. Then he stepped into the grace at Potiphar's house and he was faithful there and he multiplied there. Then he stepped into grace for um, after that. Then he went into grace for the prison. Then while he was in the prison, he stepped into grace for dream interpretation. Remember, he interpreted the dream of the butler and the baker that was fired from the king's place. 
he, and he stepped into that grace. And then he stepped into the grace of patience. Because remember, Psalm says, until the word of the Lord came, he was tested. So all of that was grace for grace. And then he stepped into the official grace, which was be governor over the land. Think about that. That governor over the land place was a result of grace for grace. He was completing one area of grace. Then he entered into the next area of grace later on. So we see how grace for grace works. So think about it like this. You grace for a, 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 a day, right? Because remember what King Jesus had it for uh, 16 and of his fullness. Could it be that God has given you your, his fullness, but you only a 50% man? You're only a 70% woman. How? Because he has given you the fullness. So the fullness is there. So what are you going to do with the fullness? So saints, the only way that you can kiss the son, like I was doing that teaching in Psalm chapter two, is if you give him the fullness that he gave to you. Imagine God giving you a full cup and then he say, I want to drink. And you only give him 10% of that cup. He's like, where the, where the whole cup at? He didn't anoint Elijah so Elijah can say, there's 7,000 prophets. I'm going to go help them out with their ministry. The 7,000 that haven't bowed their knee to bear. I'm about to go help them. No, that wasn't why he anointed them. He anointed Elisha. He anointed Elisha because Elisha was empowered to help Elijah. I anointed you to help me. I encourage you so that you could be there encouraging me. I bless you so that you can bless me. I minister to you so that you can minister to me. That's what a relationship is all about. That's how relationship, divine relationships and divine covenants work. Somebody will anoint you. And when they anoint you, they're anointing you for them. Think about it. Saints, have you ever seen a police officer training another police officer to be a donut shop holder? Or have you ever seen a police officer training another police officer to uh, carry bags? No. The police officer is training the other police officer to be a police officer. Why? Because the police officer will utilize from that other police officer when they're operating as a police officer. Now they're going to be able to assist them when they pull somebody over or they got somebody that's insubordinate. Police officer will have assistance from his. Understand, this is how the pace of your life goes. The pace of your life goes according to the spirit is not according to God loving you. It's according to how you have responded to that love. Are you using the grace for grace? Because remember, say you want a grace for health in your body, right? Then God is going to use that body. So now he's going to use that body and that grace for that body being used is going to be for the grace of health. Think about it. If you want clarity, the grace to spend time in God's presence, to pray in tongues, to praise him, is the grace that's going to lead you to the clarity. So the clarity is coming after you have used the grace of attentiveness.